Hey everybody, I'm Stacy Lynn and I have an exciting an exciting adventure going on today. So the adventure is that we're making Perry and apple, I mean I'm sorry, but pear cider. And this is gonna be super delicious. And I wanna show you how to do it and just how easy it is. I'm gonna be using some of the information that my husband and my son knows. I'll be asking them questions as we go. They've studied it more than me, but I just wanted to introduce them. And here's my husband, Scott. Hey. Here is Forrest. And now I'm gonna take you through the process. So here are the pears. Now we've already done a lot. So we had mounds and mounds and mounds of pears. And I think you might have you have seen them earlier in the week um, on my feed a picture of them all you know like just aging laying out in the middle of my dining room but now they're off of my dining room floor and we're in here making the perry so the first thing you do is and and i'm going to just leave it over to you let you tell them what to do okay so um scott is going to tell you how to apple, a pear press or cider press but to be able to use a cider press it has to be slightly crushed. We don't have an apple crusher, so we're using a meat grinder. Which is a great idea. And that, whose idea was that? Was that yours? Mine, okay, he's a genius. Yeah. Okay, so, all so right. This one, we're gonna just turn this on. We should, and, uh, and you'll see, it's crushing it up, crushes it extra fine. Already a lot of the juices are coming out. This is eight different varieties of pear. So it's gonna make a really neat flavor. Isn't that neat? So it's like meat coming out of it with pears instead. I'm loving that. It's so cool. Now these, Forrest, tell what these are. We're about to use these in a minute when we go to the press over here to actually press down the liquid out. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's all the pulp goes into the cider press and Which we'll show you in just a minute you know, how to do this. It turns into this mash. This mash has already been pressed. And uh, so it has most of the juice gone from it. So we're refilling it with, with the, the pulp. Then we'll put these wood blocks into the press. We stack up some wood and then we'll crank it tight and it's going to further press all of the juice into that bucket. Which is interesting. The bucket is actually called an ale pail. And I think that's pretty cool. So we're, it's already looking for me. It looks like apple juice right now. But. So it looks like apple juice right now. But we're going to go through this again, just in case you didn't hear it. I have my microphone on, so I'm trying to stay close to the people that are talking, but I might not have been talking loud enough over that, um, <laughs> over the, the meat grinder. So we're doing this again for you, but I wanted to take you through the steps. Okay, so pouring the mash into um, the... Apple press. or the press. I call it an apple press because that's what we got it for from the beginning. But since we've got so many pears this year, we're using it for that. Okay, and go through again. You put the, the wood blocks into the, the press. And this is probably not enough mash to really get this, to make this effective. But I'm going to put the wood blocks in here. And they and fit pretty tight so that the juice doesn't, exactly. you know, come back up over it. There we go. Just like that. And then your stack. All of the wood on top the of that. Up and then crank it down where this is smashing and ratcheting against this. And then you crank it tight. It's not going to be enough. Even with my other blocks, it's not going to be enough really, uh -oh. really do it until the next. Uh, oh. We smash the more mash. Smash okay. Smash more mash. Well, we can, but do we want to go through all no, that again? Okay. Well, here it's doing it. All right, so there we go. But it's better to put more well, in there so there's more to match. Basically, all that does is just put pressure down here. Yes. Do you want me to help too? No, I, okay, you can, but <laughs> I'm not pressing hard. I'm, I'm, I don't want to. Uh, uh, okay. If you press too hard, that pulp starts coming through. You, oh, it's yeah. It's kind of like okay. a fine line between. Okay, gotcha. You kind of have to start slow at first and then press a little bit harder and harder. Okay. So then tell us about. Um, hey, um, Scott, do you mind for just a second? Like, I want to make sure that they can hear all of this. So, um, with this pail, um, tell about what we're going to do after this goes to, you know, tell us everything after this step. So, well, after we do this step, there's a couple things that this juice needs to properly ferment and 
and not go crazy and not turn to vinegar or whatever else. Uh, so you don't want one remains is what you want to grow is yeast and not other bacteria. So we need to close it off and try to get as little oxygen in there as possible. We're going to have uh, a valve that only goes uh, one way where it lets air out but not in. Uh, we're going to add some more adjustments to adjust the pH and sugar content to make it um, where it, it's off to a good start. And we're going to monitor it over the next couple of days and, and it, you know, there's... Uh, how do you know how much sugar and, and what you need to put in it? What are you actually going to put in it? Um, and so the well, valve, I wish I could show the valve. You use a, uh, a measure uh, to measure the, the sugar content, the amount of sugar in the juice. And we could use that, but it's easier just to use somebody's pre a recipe already made by somebody. Well, I'm going to write yeah. a recipe. Exactly. And I'll have it on my blog at stacylynharris.com. Mm -hmm. And you can just look up um, pear cider mm -hmm. or, you know, Perry. It makes it easy. And, oh. um, and you'll be able to follow step by step. I'll have pictures of step by step of this entire process. And then I'll have the recipe at the bottom and exactly what to do while this is in this pail. So you could use any five gallon pail that has a tight lid, but you do need that I don't know because you've got to have that little valve. So where did you order this? I mean, well, any any supplier that does uh, wine making or uh, home brewing. brewing, you can get it from. Uh, or if you want to, you know, be lazy and you can order off of Amazon through that through that way, buy off one click. <laughs> it does make it, it easy, doesn't it? And uh, but we'll give all of the details on the pH mm -hmm. and the recipe and everything you need to know to make this. And the great thing about it, we had some friends that gave us this apple cider this last year for Christmas. We popped open the jars and everybody, you know, got some because there's not a real high, you know, content of alcohol in it. And it was um, really nice and like bubbly. It was. Like, they, it was they had it carbonated. It was delicious. Right when they capped it, they, the, the yeast just did a little bit more and produced some, some carbon dioxide where it it was all bubbly. And, uh, it was so and it was good. good. And I was like, we've got to make this. But that was apple. And they were made from um, apples, I think, up in the north or whatever. So these are pears right off of our trees, which you've seen me day after day, you know, when I've been out in the garden picking these pears or showing you the pear tree and all of that. So that's kind of neat. From the pear to the bottle, it's like super cool. So anyway, y'all, share this video. Go to stacylynharris.com, subscribe for the newsletter there, and you'll get all of this kind of stuff in your inbox every week. Talk to you soon.